My brothers and sisters, did you know that the scholars told us in this earth there is a paradise? In this earth there is a paradise. Whoever enters it will enter the paradise of the hereafter. And whoever cannot enter it will not enter the paradise of the hereafter. What is this paradise, my dear brothers and sisters? It is not materialistic. It's not the outside appearance. It's not the praise. It's not the reputation. It's not the looks. I'll tell you something, brothers and sisters. Wallahi, it is to be able to live with complete reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no matter where you go, what you do, or what happens to you. This type of a person can always see beauty in this world, can live as if there is a paradise in this world. What do I mean by that? I mean the negatives, anxieties, depressions, fears and sadnesses that we go through, grief that hits us, all sorts of pain. All of these, they become suddenly diminished, wallahi al-azim. And you become stronger automatically and able to get through them. There'll still be pain. There'll still be sadness, but your sadness and your pain is different to everyone else. You're able to live with it and keep going and you'll get over it quicker. Anybody who has a connection with Allah, with God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is able to get over all these negatives of life quicker than anyone else and be able to live a paradise in richness or in poverty, in health or in pain. There is a book called The Relationship or The uh, the the uh, something like the relationship the, the relationship between the mother and its child by John Bowlby, who said that a child has a particular connection with its mother, and that connection, when it's there, the child feels safe and at peace and at comfort until it grows up. With the warmth of its mother, it feels nothing else can happen to them, and that's through the heartbeats and everything that was in the womb. And he draws a conclusion from that saying this expert psychologist, read a great author, he said that it, it is proven through studies that people who have a connection with God are less likely to take their life and are less likely to experience long-term depressions or mental illnesses. They're able to be more resilient and get over them quicker. My brothers and sisters, we have in our deen, alhamdulillah, in our religion, something called tawakkul. First of all, what is tawakkul? Tawakkul, my dear brothers and sisters, simply means to have the trust in Allah's plan and rely on Him in any case. To trust in Allah's plan and rely on Him in all cases. Meaning that you must do everything in your ability. Listen carefully, brothers and sisters, it's very important. You must do everything within your ability that Allah had given you all the resources which Allah had gifted you. Then, after that, whatever the outcome, whatever the result, after it, after you tried your best, whether it looks good to you, or it looks bad to you, or if everybody tells you negative things about it, or everything good about it, the person with tawakkul does two things. After the event, if you get something great out of it, you do not boast. You don't think you are better and superior to other people and show it off. Number two, if it looks bad to you, if it looks bad to you, you are never pessimistic. Pessimistic is a person who has negative judgments and thoughts. So this, this is going to happen. That's going to happen. This is bad. I'm a bad person. I am a failure. I cannot do it. There's no way. I'm not even going to try again. They develop traumas. They don't know how to get out of it. What is the solution to that, brothers and sisters? Tawakkul. It's like this. You have a problem in your life or you have a fear in your life. Fear, by the way, is the opposite of tawakkul. Without tawakkul, there's fear. And then you've got to hold on to something that gives you motivation. But tawakkul, which is to hold on to Allah and connect yourself with Allah subhanahu wa that He has the best plan in everything that you do, means like this. If you're in a problem, you can't get rid of it. And it's playing on your mind. You can't go to sleep. Uh, you feel like the world has caved in on you. Do these four things. No, do these three things. I'm going to make it easier. Do these three things. Wallahi, it works, and I've seen it work with a lot of people. It works with myself as well. Number one, you need to first and foremost truly and really identify clearly what is it that is disturbing you. What's your problem? Don't, use, don't go into five or ten different problems in your life. Don't branch them out. You Just go to one by one. 
Just put it in one little bag and focus on that problem. Identify it. You can do it right now while you're sitting here. Identify a problem that plays on your mind. One. Not two. One. Is it your exams? Is it money? Is it your children? Is it your marriage? Is it something someone said to you? Is it your looks? Is it your job? Is it your car? What, what is it? Any problem. Is it something legal? Is it uh, someone who is after you? Whatever it is. One problem. Identify it. Focus on that problem. Next, you're going to do this. The next thing, you're going to do this. You're going to truly from your heart, honestly and sincerely say, even if you need to close your eyes for this, and you forget about everything around you for about one minute, not even, just 20 seconds. Just empty your mind. Can you do that? Can you do it for 20 seconds? Just don't worry about anything in the world. There is nothing else. Imagine you're going to die tomorrow. There's nothing else that matters. Focus on that problem. Close your eyes and say to Allah. If you believe in Allah, say to Him, O oh my Supreme Lord, I'm going to take this problem off me. I don't want it anymore. I don't want to think about it. I don't want to deal with it anymore. And I am giving it to you, Ya Allah. I give this problem to you. Wakkaltuka in Arabic. I delegate you. You, Allah, take it off me. I'm going to give it to you to do whatever you want with it. I don't want it anymore. I'm taking it off my shoulder. Just give it up. Give up that problem. That's the second step. Suddenly you're going to, if you do it right, you're going to feel a little bit of pressure go off you. You've given it up to Allah. If it doesn't work right now, do it tonight when you go to sleep, inshallah. Maybe you need some quietness. Maybe you need to focus. Maybe you need, if, you're a, if you're a mother, maybe, maybe children need to go to sleep. If, if you're a father who's also looking after children with your wife, maybe they need to go to sleep. Just focus. The third step you have to do after that is this. Don't have any expectations after that. Don't have any expectations. Don't think, now Allah is going to do this for me. Just empty your brain, empty your expectations, and say, Ya Rabb, anything that you decree as the outcome from this, I accept it. I accept it. And I will be brave. And I will face it. And I will do my best for it. Because I know, whatever the outcome is, Ya Rabb, I will get through it. Summon bravery. There is a fourth thing, and that is very important. Do what you can within the power that Allah has given you to take care of this problem. But remember what you've just done. You've given it to Allah. You've taken away all the expectations. Whatever outcome, you know that even if it's hard, because you gave it to Allah, He will assist you through it. And believe that and be motivated to it. And lastly, do what you can out of the resources that Allah had given you. Brothers and sisters, if you can get used to that, I swear, wallahi, any problem you go through, whatever comes your way, and it will, you will face many pains and many problems in your life. Don't you dare ever sit down and think you want a paradise where there's no pain, nothing. There has to be. But we don't know what's good for us and what's bad for us. You do what's halal. Fear Allah in what you're doing. Don't go for the sins. If you do, repent to Allah and forgive yourself. Don't worry. We all make mistakes. But give it to Allah. You know the sin? Even if you've done a sin, even if you've done something haram, give it to Allah. Say, Ya Rabb, the thing that I am feeling right now, I feel so much guilt of that thing last time that I did. Ya Rabb, I give it to you. I don't want it anymore. I don't want this burden. Forgive me, Ya Allah, Wallahi. Ya Rabb. My Lord, I regret it. I don't want it anymore. Forgive me. Suddenly say, I don't have any expectations. I'm going to do my best. Be brave and keep going. Forgive yourself. If it's a right of someone else, say, Ya Rab, I don't want this problem. Don't expect any outcome. But the fourth thing is, go and see what can you do to repay the person that you've wronged? How can you make it up to them? Lift that burden off you in any case. Brothers and sisters, let me explain something further. One of the biggest mistakes a lot of Muslims do is when they think about relying on God, on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they take it too far, to one extreme. And that is, they forget about 
their actions that they have to do, and they forget about cause and effect, the laws of cause and effect. If you do this, that's going to happen. If you don't do that, you're not going to get that. Who created these laws of cause and effect, brothers and sisters? Who created them? Is it not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? It's Allah who created the laws of cause and effect. So when you do something, you will receive. Go ahead and do it. Tawakkul means to use the laws of cause and effect which Allah created for you. Because He gave them to you. We're sitting there sometimes and we think tawakkul, tawakkul. Everything, sometimes we have 50% of the solution around us. But we refuse except for a supernatural solution. We want something different. Do you realize that? I see a lot of Muslims, they sit there, they think, I need something different. Why? Because somehow I'm some special. Because I'm a Muslim, I've got to be more special. God has to give me something more special. Some kind of sign, different to everything else. I heard one, one young person said to me, I wanted a sign from Allah about which way I should go. I said, what did you expect? He said, I expected a lightning. Well, I don't know why I expected a lightning. I think he watches too much Netflix. I don't know what the issue is. Lightning. Another one said, well, I just wanted hack a breeze, a little wind to come through the window. He says, what kind of tawakkul is that? <laughs> Brothers and sisters, you have to use the laws, and effect, the laws of cause and effect. You have to do what you can. There is the other extreme. The other extreme is called when you rely only and solely and mostly on cause and effect. Just things. And you don't rely on Allah at all. That's the other extreme. And these are most people who don't believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And these are the people who go through most stresses because when things don't work out, they try to get motivated, but it's very hard. As soon as something doesn't work out once, twice, three times, or they lose someone from their life, they don't know what to do with themselves anymore. But if you have your connection with a higher power, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, brothers and sisters, wallahi, no matter what happens, you still have greater hope than anyone else. People still have hope, but your hope is far greater because your ambition your goal, your connection is something beyond just this world. This world is going to temporary, is only temporary, it's going to end. So how it is tawakkul? It is to rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do what you can of your effort together, hand in hand. <laughs>